I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from the book of Nehemiah, chapter 12, and let's focus on verses 27 through 29. At the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, they sought out the Levites from wherever they settled to bring them to Jerusalem and celebrate the dedication with hymns of thanksgiving and with songs accompanied by cymbals and lutes and lyres. And the trained musicians were assembled together from uh, the area around Jerusalem, the villages of uh, the Nafoti and Beit Gilgal and the region of Giva and Asmayet, for the singers had built villages for themselves all around Jerusalem. You know, as I mentioned earlier, the gates around Jerusalem are considered by many scholars to represent different ways that people enter into the Lord's presence. For instance, if you were, uh, uh, if you had an issue between you and the Lord, there was a gate that you could enter through, which corresponded to your particular issue. The names of the gates were symbolic. And you can leave your burden at that gate, so to speak, and then enter into the presence of the Lord unhindered to meet with the Lord. And in order to facilitate your entrance into Jerusalem, the gatekeepers and musicians were stationed there. Nehemiah chapter 7, verse 1. After the wall had been rebuilt and I had set the doors in its place, the gatekeepers and the singers of the Levites were appointed. There's an old saying, music calms the savage beast. And that idea is definitely true when it comes to worship music, because the reason for music within the context of a worship service is to help people transition. It helps them prepare their hearts to receive the message of God's Word. And if we must lay down our loads, as it were, before we enter Jerusalem, well, then music softens the heart. It sweetens the experience. Music, therefore, is the spoonful of sugar that helps God's medicine go down. And traditionally, Jerusalem was to be open 24-7. That is, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The symbolism was that the Lord is always open. He's always accessible. Therefore, gatekeepers and musicians conducted their duties in shifts so that there would continually be praise before the Lord and they lived close to the temple. First Chronicles chapter 9, verse 33, those who were musicians, heads of the Levite family, stayed in the rooms of the temple, and they were exempt from other duties because they were responsible for the work day and night. Can you imagine a church today? With its surrounding neighborhoods inhabited all by worship team members and their families. <laughs> and the sole reason for their close proximity to the church being that they were continually leading music 24 hours a day in a never-ending worship jam session. Well, I like the relationship between gatekeepers and musicians because there's kind of a balance between the freedom of music and the accountability of gatekeeping. You see, you have too much liberty with no accountability, and that leads to liberal worldliness. But if you have too much accountability with no freedom to worship, well, that leads to spiritual pride and legalism. And aren't we sick of both of those churches? Well, let's thank the Lord that He gives us balance of both His holiness and His grace, which allows us to fear His holiness even while boldly approaching His throne. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Groundworks Ministries operates entirely through financial donations from faithful people like you. And your giving to Groundworks Ministries transforms lives. Would you consider making a donation to Groundworks Ministries today? Because we really do need your monthly support now more than ever. And donating is secure and easy at our website, groundworksministries.com. Another way to help is to tell people about Groundworks Ministries. Share these podcasts with friends and family and on your social media. And of course, you can always direct folks to our website, groundworksministries.com.